بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام uh, عليكم طلبتنا الأعزاء Welcome again in this uh, lecture of the human anatomy and uh, although it is late I'd like to say to you عيد سعيد وكل عام وأنتم بخير وإن شاء الله uh, نرجع جميعا وبأسرع وقت بعد انتهاء هذا الوباء ونتمنى لكم الصحة والسلامة Our lecture today, we will go on in the discussion of the anatomy of the neck. Uh, in fact, and up to me, I think uh, the neck is one of the most complicated regions in the human body from the anatomical point of view, <clears throat> or it may be the most complicated one, and it is the most challenging region uh, uh, for the surgeon due to the uh, uh, many many structures vital structures that uh, present in this relatively small region of the body at first we have to define the boundaries of the neck as we uh, said many times before and simplified the definition of the anatomy as uh, the geography of the human body so we have uh, to know the boundaries to which this region is extended the neck uh, actually is the region of the body that lies between the lower margin of the mandible lower margin of the mandible above and the suprasternal notch and the upper border of the clavicle below anyone of you can palpate the suprasternal notch at the midline in the upper chest you will feel the, the depression uh, uh, in V shape uh, pattern and this is the suprasternal notch this is the end of the boundary of the neck inferiorly <coughs> regarding the layers and moving from superficial to deep uh, we will start surely with the skin of the neck and uh, the clinical note here uh, is the presence of the natural lines of a cleavage or the skin tension lines the importance of, uh, of uh, these lines uh, lies in the uh, surgical practice uh, because when I want to make an incision in the neck, I will do it in this uh, manner. Uh, I mean uh, horizontally and not vertically. Because if we follow these lines, the scar uh, that results from our surgery will, will be narrow. Uh, on the other hand, if we, uh, if we do a vertical incision, for instance, in this, in this uh, case, if we do a vertical incision, the scar will be uh, ugly and uh, white scar. <coughs> Cutaneous nerves of the neck, and uh, uh, we mean by cutaneous nerves, the nerves that, uh, uh, that uh, provide uh, nerve supply for the skin surfaces uh, first we have the greater occipital nerve which is a branch of the posterior ramus of the second cervical nerve um, I want to remind you uh, to the difference between the cranial and the spinal nerves uh, as we discussed in the lectures of the first stage we have uh, 31 nerves of uh, spinal nerves that emerges from the spinal cord in contrast we have uh, a cranial nerves 12 pairs that emerges from the brain directly so the spinal nerves uh, which uh, will be uh, classified into groups and the first group is the cervical nerves we have eight cervical nerves and the first one of them has no uh, cutaneous branches so uh, this nerve will provide no sensation for any area of the neck <coughs> uh, 
the lesser occipital nerve is a branch of the second cervical nerve. The great auricular nerve uh, formed by the uh, union between uh, branches from the uh, second and the third cervical nerves. The transverse cutaneous nerves also formed by the uh, union between branches from the uh, second cervical and the third cervical nerves. And uh, finally, the supraclavicular nerves uh, are formed uh, by the union between branches from the uh, third cervical and the fourth cervical nerves. In this uh, picture, we see the distribution and the positions of these nerves. Uh, <clears throat> the great auricular nerve, uh, sometimes called the greater auricular nerve, in some textbooks, but uh, actually, to be more precise, uh, we have to call it, we have to call it a great auricular nerve because we have no uh, lesser uh, auricular nerve. So the greater auricular is not the uh, correct name of this nerve. <clears throat> then, uh, if we uh, move more deeply within the tissue, we will uh, be faced by the superficial fascia. And this uh, layer uh, of neck is a thin layer that includes the platysma muscle originate from deep fascia over the pectoralis major and the deltoid muscle. It is uh, inserted into the body of the mandible and the angle of the mouth. You see here that it is extended uh, to reach the uh, oral commissure, the angle of the mouth. And it is innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve. And uh, the action of this muscle is the depression of the mandible and the angle of the mouth. One of the clinical uh, correlations with regard to this muscle is uh, targeting it by uh, the Botox injection in order to overcome the bonding uh, effect that is a consequence of aging. Uh, the uh, so-called the Nefertiti lift uh, named after the uh, famous Egyptian queen uh, who was regarded as the symbol of beauty historically uh, by her uh, having the uh, smooth and long neck and uh, a well-defined jaw line. Now we have a few superficial veins uh, and the first uh, one is the external jugular vein. Uh, this vein formed by the union of the uh, posterior uh, division of the retromandibular vein and the posterior auricular vein and uh, this occur behind the angle of the mandible uh, then uh, the external jugular vein will uh, run obliquely across the neck over the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle uh, passing to the posterior triangle of the neck it has several tributaries uh, the first two are the main tributaries that is formed by their union which is which are the posterior auricular and the posterior division of the retromandibular vein also we have the posterior external jugular vein the transverse cervical vein the supra scapular vein and the anterior jugular vein <coughs> then uh, we will discuss the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is the key muscle of the neck, as we said in the previous lecture. Uh, why it is the key muscle of the neck? Because it is uh, because the neck is divided into anterior and posterior triangles by the passing of this muscle. The anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, as we see here. Um, is covering the carotid arteries, the internal jugular vein, the deep cervical lymph nodes, uh, and the uh, carotid sheath, and the posterior border of this muscle is related to the cervical plexus and the phrenic nerve. 
this muscle originate from the manubrium sterni and the medial third of clavicle. I have to draw your attention uh, to uh, a point that the clavicle is divided into lateral, middle, and medial. So uh, focus with me, please. Uh, the medial third of the clavicle, not the middle third of the clavicle. Uh, there is a difference between two terms. Uh, however, the insertion of the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle will be the uh, mastoid process of the temporal bone and part of the occipital bone. It is innervated of the, by the 11th cranial nerve, which is the spinal part of the accessory nerve, and also uh, <coughs> by uh, second and the third cervical nerves. And the action when the two muscles acting together, I mean bilateral contraction, we will uh, have a flexing of the neck and extending of the head. And when one muscle uh, is acting, this will turn the head to the opposite side. <coughs> also, we have another important muscle in the neck, and it is the key muscle for understanding of the root of the neck. It is the scalenus anterior muscle. Uh, the scalenus anterior muscle is deeply situated and it descends almost vertically. As we see here, it is uh, uh, the orientation of this muscle is uh, almost vertical orientation from the vertebral uh, column to the first rib. So it is originated from the transverse processes and here I ask you to, uh, <coughs> to uh, review the anatomy of the uh, vertebra in general uh, because uh, this muscle originates from the transverse processes of the third, fourth, fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. Uh, and it is inserted into the first uh, rib, innervated by the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth cervical nerves, and uh, it acting uh, to elevate the first rib, uh, laterally uh, flexing and rotation of the cervical part of the vertebral column. <coughs> Finally, we have to discuss the deep cervical fascia. And it is uh, an important uh, tissue plane. It supports the muscles, the vessels, and the viscera of the neck. In some regions, it is condensed to form a well-defined fibrous sheet uh, that is called the investing layer. Uh, also, uh, in certain regions, uh, it forms the pretracheal and prevertebral layers, and also it is condensed to form the carotid sheath. So we have uh, uh, four uh, condensations of this uh, fascia. The first one, the investing layer, that, uh, that is a thick layer and uh, surround the neck, and it splits to include the trapezius muscle here. We can see the trapezius muscle and uh, the uh, deep <coughs> cervical fascia enclosing it from inner and outer sides. Uh, and the sternocleidomastoid, sternocleidomastoid muscle, as we see it here. And also, uh, and we uh, mentioned that uh, before uh, uh, two lectures, uh, it splits to enclose the parotid gland and the superficial part of the submandibular gland. <coughs> the pretracheal layer surrounds the thyroid, parathyroid glands, and uh, the uh, infrahyoid muscles. Here we can see the pretracheal layer in this uh, yellow line. Uh, and within it, we can see the thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, uh, the trachea, of course, and the infrahyoid muscles that, uh, uh, that were discussed in the previous lecture. 
Also, the prevertebral layer, which uh, uh, crossing the neck like a septum here, uh, and uh, uh, it lies behind the pharynx and the esophagus and in front of the prevertebral muscles and then we can see the uh, vertebral column or forms the fascial floor of the posterior triangle lastly we have the carotid sheath which is a local condensation of the deep fascia uh, and uh, it surrounds uh, several uh, important and very vital structures which are the uh, common carotid and internal carotid artery, uh, internal jugular vein, the 10th uh, cranial nerve, which is the vagus nerve, uh, and the deep cervical lymph nodes. Uh, we can see that the external carotid artery is out of the uh, carotid sheath after it is uh, <coughs> division from the common carotid artery. This was uh, a simple lecture uh, and an overview of the uh, of the neck, and uh, of course the uh, as I said uh, in the starting of the lecture, the neck is one of the most complicated regions, and there are many many details and structures and uh, and informations uh, related to this topic. But uh, we are. Uh, uh, trying to stick to the basic. Thank you for listening and uh, any question or any notes, I'm ready to hear it from you.